All right. Well, one thing that never gets old is watching the best players in the world play magic. So let's see what happens here between Paolo Vitor Damodorosa and Seth Manfield. Take a look at the opening hands. Giant Killer, Selfless Savior, and Skyclave Apparition. Not happy with that. Sends it back. Finds Seasoned Hallow Blade in the second one and is happier with that. Sending the Giant Killer to the bottom of the library. Yep, pretty good there. Giant Killer uh, only really having that use of killing Yorian or killing Vorinclex. Um, other than that, pretty pretty weak card. Um, you know, pre-board, post-board, we would have saw that killing a giant Gargaroth uh, as far as last <laughs> match goes. Um, so a no-brainer bottom there from the reigning leader in the MPL, Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa. Kick things off, Selfless Savior on the battlefield, binding the old gods off the top of the library from Seth Manfield, scrying that to the top. Going to get a Tangled Florahedron down on the battlefield yeah. to help ramp up and get to that juicy ultimatum that's sitting in his hand. Yeah, and this is honestly only a play you can really do on the play um, when you're playing this ultimatum deck, because if you ever get your Tangled Florahedron Skyclave apparitioned, um, which we do see Paulo has, it becomes kind of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, but going turn three, binding the old gods here is is going to look excellent, even if it's only killing a selfless savior. It at least gets you that land back, um, yeah. and then maybe we lose Tangled Florhedron or something, but at least the damage is kind of done. Yeah, so selfless savior is going to be dealt with, sacrifices itself for the seasoned Hallow Blade. There are two Skyclave Apparitions, though, in Paolo's hand, so he will be able to take care of Binding the Old Gods, but does he decide to go for the creature instead? Let's take a look and see what he targets. Yeah, interesting there, because you essentially get to Skyclave Apparition a land drop, mm -hmm. which sometimes that can be very meaningful. Um, so there was an option to take Tangled Florhedron first, and then Binding the Old Gods, or excuse me, take Binding the Old Gods first, and then Tangled Florhedron. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I think I like this better so that Seth couldn't go like land five shadows verdict or something. Yeah. So slowing him down, uh, we will get the land here off of the binding the old gods. And also, is there a consideration for the size of or well, the value of the CMC beneath the Skyclave apparitions, knowing that there are board wipes in this deck? Because, you know, you'd rather give your opponents a 2 2 than a 4 4. Definitely. Absolutely. And even if I. I think it's just general policy for Skyclave Apparition that you usually want to take the smaller converted mana cost thing first. Not always, mm -hmm. of course, but just with it in mind that it's probably going to die. These Soul Tide decks run a ton of removal, and then you don't <laughs> give them a 4-4 four -four right away instead of a 2-2. Two -two. So I think yeah. there's definitely justification for that. Yeah, and also the second chapters of um, Finding the Old Gods, they're not terribly exciting. You know, the first one is certainly the most impactful in this matchup, yep. being able to kill something outright. Sure, you get a land, and then sure, your creatures get death touch, but you don't mm -hmm. have creatures, so just let that one go. Honestly, that card's so good. Thank God the third chapter is basically non-existent, because uh, <laughs> that card does not need to be any better. Um, I want to pull some attention to Seth Manfield's choice to get the Ketri trial. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is only one in the deck, and it is specifically for the flip side of Velky. If you were to draw that one of, um, so kind of, kind of funny that he gets the Ketri Trium and then just cast Velky anyways. That <laughs> he probably changed his mind mid play because otherwise that doesn't make sense. There's no way to get back um, Velky, so probably wishes he got a, a Zagoth Trium there. Yeah, ups to go for the Velky line to see what's in hand here for Paolo Vitor. And has the option between Helvar and another Skyclave apparition. It's gonna go for Helvar. Interesting. Yeah, I think I like that. The the um, sword side of Helvar looks pretty scary uh, if you're Seth Manfield here. So if you Skyclave apparition the Valky and then get it back, and you kind of get to have a nice tempo play, um, I think that's better than just strapping up one of these creatures. But, so the draw at the top here for Palo is Mall of the Skyclaves, which is an excellent artifact added in from Zendikar Rising and just gives oh, yeah. just gives the mono white deck a way to close out games super fast. Now if you oh, equip yeah. that onto your seasoned Hallow Blade, you get a five power creature. If you get Halvar down after that, it's gonna be double striking. And that is basically game over for most of these decks. 
Yeah, I still have nightmares of my opponent going <laughs> season hollow blade into Maul the Skyclave take five. It's just uh, mm -hmm. it's nothing you want to be seeing in standard, and I don't play the mono white deck that often, so it's nothing I've done personally. So it's only scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> so no Maul of the Skyclaves pre combat. Just going to swing in here with the two creatures in for five. Does Ooh, Valky correct. jump in the way here or? Is Valky intending to become Helvar? Going to channel his inner god. Really interesting play from the reigning world champion here. You you had so many options pre-combat, like attack with Faithless Saving, Skyclave away, the only blocker, Maul to pump it up. You know, I, I make it a point to never question any Apollo's play, so uh, I'm sure he had a plan in mind and did not mind a block to either of those creatures. Well, one way or another, Valky, God of Lies, is going to get taken care of either by blocking, but in this case, Skyclave Apparition deals with that creature and keeps a land in hand as well. Doesn't play out land number four just yet. Big draw for Seth there. Land seven was pretty much needed um, to be able to cast this ultimatum here, or land six, but with the Wolf Willow Haven, um, this mm -hmm. is seven. So uh, I think it's time. All righty, let's see what we're going to go and fish out from the library. <laughs> Palo's face, a little bit of a smile and shake of the head. It's just like, well, okay, I guess, sure, this is happening now. Yeah. What do I have to deal with? Yep, here's the one pick that you don't normally see, but Emergent Ultimatum kind of goes in modes. I, you ask yourself the question, like, am I behind? Do I need to catch up? And if the answer is yes, it's usually Shadow's Verdict uh, and then two other things. So, and the ultimate I'm behind combo is that Vorinclex, Kiora, because even if they get rid of Shadow's Verdict, you put Vorinclex into play first <laughs> and then Kiora best the Sea God comes into play, creates an 8-8 Kraken for you and chapter twos to tap down your opponent's permanents yep. and ice them down for a turn, so. Yeah, pretty brutal whichever way you cut it here for Paolo Vitor, who's now mm -hmm. certainly behind as this ultimatum is going to resolve. Shadow's Verdict and Vorinclex are the picks. And in this instance, he's going to get a bunch of creatures back, too, which is super neat. Yeah, and Vorinclex, you know, doesn't really work with his hand anymore. So it's not like the, the Vorinclex is that great. But it is still a big attacker mm -hmm. where Seth just completely is going to change gears now and say, I'm I'm the aggro deck now. And, and he's going to push through with that Heartless Act <laughs> uh, as his last card was just excellent. Yep. Can even Elvarge. make a wolf, I believe, too. So that, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Elvar tries to get in for the blocks there, but unfortunately he's going to be heartlessly acted away. In for 10. Down to four goes Paolo Vitor, creates the wolf, and Paolo is not going to be able to pull mm. this one back. Let's go to game number two. Seth Manfield picking up the victory there. Yeah, these uh, mono white snow decks are kind of running cold, uh, mm -hmm. pun intended, again here <laughs> against these Sultai decks. You know, like um, it is it is technically a matchup that even Paulo um, wrote about. He wrote an yeah. awesome article leading into this and said mono white is generally favored against these Sultai lists, but. As we've been seeing all weekend, it doesn't really matter if they're favored, quote unquote. The, the matches are so close yeah. um, all the way across. Yeah, and that's the great thing about standard right now is like everything seems viable. There's no right mm -hmm. answer in what to play. You know, we've seen in previous standards gone by and the reign of Oko, let's not uh, remind too many people about that, but like that was the deck to play. If you didn't play that, you were basically giving yourself a handicap going into matches. But, you know, standard right now is awesome because... You can yeah. pretty much play anything. I just got shivers up my spine when I'm you sorry. said that wretched, wretched planeswalker. I remember playing in MC <laughs> Richmond where um, our last, well, actually it was between Paulo and Andre in the finals. It yeah. was 69% of the metagame was variants on Oko Snow decks. So now, you, you know what? You know what? Yeah. 69 is usually nice, but I'm yeah. not going to give it to it. That wasn't nope. nice at nope, that nice. Uh, tournament at all. The nope. only time where that is not nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is nice, though, is the start that Paolo is having here with mm -hmm. the Usher of the Fallen getting in there and boasting, which is a new mechanic from the new set, and creating a little 1-1. One -one. Yeah, nice little play if you don't have a great 2-drop um, like Luminarch Aspirant. We just, we just drew that. Um, otherwise, 
Paulo definitely would have still just played that last turn. Um, but I think just getting a free 1-1 one, one was better than playing uh, Alcid, uh as just a 1-1 one, one anyways. Yeah. Take a look at Seth Manfield's hand. Not a whole lot of interaction. Does have Cultivate times two and Essica's Chariot, but Paolo is going to look to make these creatures as big as he possibly can with the help of the Luminarch Aspirant. Now I'll see the Elias Bounty coming on in, able to protect against something in the next turn. Yeah, this is one of those hands. You're on the draw against Mono White, and Seth doesn't have the excellent draw of going two mana removal spell into maybe another two mana removal spell on turn three into extinction or vent. That's kind mm -hmm. of the draw you need to have against a good draw from the mono white snow aggro deck and Seth just doesn't have it. So this is going to be a, uh, a tough one. Oh yeah. Let's see how quickly Paolo can kill Seth Manfield here as these little weenies, which aren't so weenie after all, once they get going, <laughs> Swing on in here for a buttload of damage. Luminarch Aspirant putting the counter on the Faceless Haven. And in comes a swing. Yep. And uh, the nice thing that this does here is Paulo says, I'm going to attack with Faceless Haven because if you go land five Shadows Verdict, which is the best thing Seth could be doing right now from Sultai, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It doesn't then, matter. Yeah. Yeah. Faceless Haven will still just clean it up next turn. So I believe we're going to see a uh, game three from these yeah, there two you go. world champions here. There you go. That's what you like to see from the mono white deck. Just a bunch of dudes going sideways, swinging for face. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, love it. All right, and so we do we do see, sorry to interrupt you there, we do see a little bit of a different list um, from the rest of the testing team. The only real change is we do see just two negates in the main. Seth was mm -hmm. clearly a little bit more concerned for the mirror you're mm -hmm. in, Demir Rogues, <laughs> um, those style of things. But after the post-board configuration, their, their sideboarding uh, deck or their post-board configuration looks the, to be the exact same. Yeah, so sideboard decisions made. Dranith Magistrate proved to be a very, very good card against this matchup yesterday, and it's in the opening hand here for Paolo, so he's going to be pretty, pretty pleased about that. Mm -hmm. Wrong seven drop in the hand for Seth Manfield here, but uh, <laughs> still a powerful card if he gets to it. Getting things underway here. Selfless Savior down on the battlefield. Pass the turn back. And a Temple of Melody off the top for Seth Manfield. Artless Act is going to take care of this poor little puppy dog. Not long for this world, unfortunately. That's something that Seth would have loved to have had in the last game. Yes. Cheap interaction as Season Hello Blade comes on down. Okay. That that changes the play a little bit. I was going to be really interested to see if Seth was going to buy Yori in there. Mm -hmm. The very powerful play of just... Binding the old gods, and then if you have land five, being able to Yorian blink it, get another land, kill another thing is quite, is pretty strong. But I think just eliminate here, even on a season hollow blade, if you have to, to make them discard another card is okay. And then just binding the next turn seems like a better plan. Yeah. So a good draw from Seth. Curious to see what Paolo is going to do this turn. Has several options available, but opts to go for the Luminarch Aspirant. Get mm -hmm. that down on the battlefield, get some counters ticking. There is an Eliminate poised to take that out immediately. Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. I think you have to. You, you do not want that Season Hollow Blade to get to four power. Um, you know, that just shortens your clock by a turn or two already. It's already a tricky enough card to deal with, so I, I like that. Yep. It's going to be joined by an Usher of the Fallen. Wolfwell Haven drawn here for Seth Manfield. And Binding of the Old Gods is going to be the card we see played to take care of the Usher of the Fallen to prevent this board from getting out of hand. I like that you said Binding of the Old Gods because that's how I read that card every single time. Oh, me I'm too. glad somebody else uh, yep. does that too. It just seems like it should have an of in there, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think it should. <laughs> It was a typo. <laughs> it was a typo. Uh, so Faces Haven getting in for some damage there. Down to 10 goes Seth. 
Needs to find a removal spell, or things are looking pretty darn bad here for him indeed. Mm -hmm. Going for that Ketri Triome again, just in case Velki is on the top of Seth's deck, so he could cast that here in a couple of turns, or even next turn, if he loads up uh, some lands with these Wolf Willow Havens. That would be able to get Kiora out, right? Next yeah. turn. So I think... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Seth can go Wolf Willow Haven on one of the lands, one of the untapped lands, use that land to Wolf Willow Haven another untapped land, and then play the Clearwater Pathway and buy Yorian. So I think you can kind of do everything you want um, with this hand. We'll see if Seth values that or values leaving up some mana to represent a, uh, you know, a removal spell. <laughs> At this point, I don't think Paolo cares if he has the removal spells. Just like, right, I'm turning sideways. Let's go. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> I have found with this matchup, if you haven't killed them by turn four or five, you're usually dead as the aggressive deck. So. Yeah. And man, that Fateless Haven attack there was, um, you know, pretty strong. Did he? Mm -mm. He could have played that Clearwater Pathway, right? Yep. Hmm. Maybe going for the bluff here. Let's see if Paolo buys it or not. Interesting. Because the one thing that I really don't like about that play, unless I'm missing that he already played a land drop, uh, is if you're able to go Kiora Best the Sea God and then Yorian Blink it, that's mm -hmm. pretty strong. But I guess um, you can buy Yorian and play it in the same turn. So it, it's not too big of a deal. Yeah. Well, the Sky Claims called upon here. Straps onto the season Hello Blade in for five, down to five. Goes Seth Manfield, and Dranath Magistrate is the follow up. So even if he had to draw an ultimatum, it would not work. What a great draw from Paolo here. Uh, as far as I'm seeing, the only draw that keeps Seth alive is just buying Yorian, playing a very sad Yorian. Mm -hmm. um, and then that giant killer is going to finish this game off. So we really kind of saw this matchup being played out. In two very different ways. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in this situation, because this is going to be uh, Paulo's Paulo's match. Yep. Unfortunately, Yorion's got nothing to blink. He's just going to hang out there and get chopped down by this giant killer. And we are going to see Paolo Vitor Damodorosa pick up the victory here against Seth Manfield. 2 1, Mono White Aggro coming out on top. Yeah. Ooh, and you get to do a nice. Faceless Haven. You get to do a nice little play where you get to attack first, hold priority, and then chop yep. down with vigilance. Really? Like just just <laughs> a little insult to injury. We didn't need it, but you know, there's nothing better than dealing as much damage as you can. Yep. Just gotta be <laughs> as efficient as possible. And that's exactly. one of the things we love about the reigning world champion.